Okay, Wayne DeFrancesco here. Welcome to WayneDeFrancesco.com. And we're doing a video today. The swing of one of the great players of all time, Greg Norman. If you enjoy my video analysis and you want to get more personalized instructional videos, you might consider joining the site. All the information is right there for you. So let's take a look at Greg Norman. When I watch this swing, I'm thinking in terms of the swing being formulated before swing mechanics were really understood, well, or not maybe understood, but certainly this isn't what you would, I mean Norman probably could have swung anyway, you could have told him to point the club here or there, so when you watch the swing and you note the the way the club shifts plane and then the way the body has to recover and the way the hands have to turn the club over for him to be one of the great drivers of the ball I mean he was number one in the world for 331 weeks that's a six and a half years he won 20 tour events, right around 70 other events, so 90 tournaments. He only won two majors. You know the story of how he got beat any number of times by amazing golf shots by other players. But uh, still, great career. And kind of like Seve, Norman's career pretty much stopped when he was he was in his early 40s I think he stopped winning tournaments in 96 7 maybe 97 so he was winning for about 20 years and and then he just stopped now granted he has made buckets of money smart businessman but he wasn't one of the guys who kept playing well all the way up through the senior ranks. He's only played nine senior tournaments. Still great though, almost won the British Open a few years ago at age 53. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is that when I do these videos, if you'll, uh, one of the things I always do is I check to see if the camera's moving around. So I'll pick an object, like if you look at this T marker here, so I'll put a, a horizontal line and a vertical line and then I'll play the play the video slow and see if the lines move around. So here you can see that the horizontal line is moving all over the place so you're not going to be able to put one on top of his head because it'll move around. If you look at the vertical line it jogs off and then it comes back so it's just barely off of where it started so if I go to the video and I draw some lines just inside of where I would usually draw them then we'll get a we'll get a read at, at as it moves around we'll get a read as to how he's moving in relation to the lines so let's take a look now what's it's pretty obvious is is that he pretty much didn't try to restrict too much his movement so he just let it Extend now. This is his Jack Nicholas influence. You know, back in the back in the 70s and 80s, I think the instruction that he would have been privy to was mostly Nicholas's books and tips. You can really see it in the the arm extensions. This is pretty much the classic what would be called the one piece takeaway. You can see the elbows fairly locked up and the large extension and late wrist cock. Now this, all of this takeaway stuff led to some interesting developments in the rest of the swing. When you look at it from the front view, what you'll notice is the loading to the right. So you see a lot of movement of the hips. Now, it's interesting that the right hip doesn't really move that far out of the box, but the left leg is given a lot. So a la sort of like a Payne Stewart thing without the heel coming up too much. The head 
definitely a few inches off the ball. But the recovery is amazing, and, and the, the, the timing, you watch the club set into the wrists, some serious lag. I mean, Norman hit the ball with the equipment at the time. He was probably the, one of the longest hitters, and certainly the highest, so he could really launch it up in the air. And from what I understand, he hit the ball very straight, not a lot of curve on it. Uh, tremendous control of arm speed and arm position. Uh, even though his movement of the shaft was causing some complications. So when we look at great lateral movements, this is something that I always look at and I really like all the time. So he had a huge amount of forward with the hips. I think that was more likely. You'll find that more uh, when golfers were playing these persimmon drivers and balada balls. Because I think you could still hit the driver a little more like an iron shot. Now that the balls don't spin as much, you need to launch them up in the air. And the clubs really do some of the work. So you won't see as much, generally as much lateral in the, in the driver swings nowadays. But again, really love that transition. You can see he's a big guy. He's 6 feet 180. Very athletic. Strong. Now, you can see the right foot here, and this this will tell you that this is more when he was in his prime. As if you watch the foot, you'll see the foot slide backwards. Now, this is a movement that he was necessary, really, for his swing to function better because that right foot slide deepened his hips. So if we look at it, this is kind of an off angle here, you'll see. I marked where the ball flies. So the camera is really situated sort of back behind his feet a little bit. But the interesting thing here is going to be to note the body movement through the ball. Now in the takeaway, this is where that tight elbow, one piece takeaway would get players in trouble because the right arm is sort of stuck when the elbow doesn't fold. So the left arm has to almost roll up around it, and what happens is the grip begins to go out away from the body. Um, we'll see this when we look at some other swings. This is a video I actually took at Hazeltine in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2002, I think it was. So you can see the right arm doesn't bend very much, and the hands move the grip up above its initial position out away from the body. And when the club stays a little bit low, this is earlier in his career, it would get behind him a little bit and then as it would get up to the top he would cross the line significantly. So this is this would be a position where if somebody came to an instructor who knew his mechanics, the first thing you'd probably try to do would be to uncross the club. Uh, the reason you would uncross the club is, is that this club has to whip back and, and find, refine the plane. And the interesting thing about Norman is that he didn't move his hands outward like a lot of guys who cross do. Like would move, A lot of guys would move their hands like Nicholas toward the ball more. Norman would drop his hands and you can see the initial movement is pretty much straight down. Now he's running the risk of getting himself nice and stuck here, but great strength in the grip and hands to keep the club above the right forearm. Now, remember he's trying to hit it over there to the left a little bit. The club's still coming in from behind him, but watch, watch how the body will clear. Watch the right foot. There it goes. So the interesting thing here is the, the movement is really the butt goes underneath and the head goes back. Now this is not something again that you would teach. You would probably want to fix that up. <laughs> of course if you fix Greg Norman you probably wouldn't, wouldn't have had such a great career. So watch the head. You'll see the big back up in the head. Now anytime your body is is going to 
try to get more vertical with your hips shooting underneath you, your hands centrifugally are going to be flinging outward and you're going to have to close that thing. But he was so great that he could just time that and drive the ball down the fairway consistently. Pretty crazy when you think about it. So, so again, when you watch that that movement and you see the, the butt go under and the head go back, when that foot slid back, it really helped him keep the hips deep and provide space for the arms to, to rotate through past him. So again here you'll see that the club will get crossed at the top. and then find its way down on a fairly steep path. And he must have been hitting a cut shot here because otherwise the club, he would never come into it outside. It was super windy that day on the range, so he must have been trying to fade this one. But still, when you look at that, when you look at the hand release, certainly not particularly easy to manage. Um, and I think that a lot of times in the end you'll find guys who who's, it gets a little bit too difficult then for them to manage later on and they don't have the grind and the drive to keep practicing so the game kind of slips and I mean Norman was so successful that I think when he started to to play not quite as well he just sort of lost interest and decided he'd have more fun making wine and buying yachts and making millions of dollars and marrying celebrities. Now, it's kind of interesting that in some of these videos his foot won't slide back. These are a little later videos. There's no way that helped. Not with not with the rest of the swing doing pretty much the same thing. So, that's one of those things where you don't really want to fix some things because even though by themselves when you would focus on you know a foot sliding backwards that fixing that just because you didn't like it if you understood how it fit into the mix you would just leave it you know so I always like to draw the box here and Norman is a guy who did not finish near the box and the other thing, you really didn't do much. You didn't lower much in the backswing. You did count on the way down a bit. So pretty much everybody does that on the downswing. You see them. I mean, that's that's a given, pretty much. Again, a little bit of a move where his hips would shoot out this way. Now, granted, at as he gets to the ball, they're still pretty much back. But then the, at that point, the head is also pulling away. So again, in my mind, that just makes the, the release action fairly complex, although he's so good, he makes it look pretty easy. Another thing to consider was, you know, he was the Tiger Woods of his day around the greens. Um, I got a chance to watch him a little bit one time, and he was a wizard. I don't think there was a better, for the time he was the best, there was not a better putter or pitcher of the ball. You put him around the green, he could come up with just about anything, which obviously helps you to be number one in the world. So there you have it, Greg Norman. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you with the next one.